New Realtor 2021, what I wish I knew when I started. Find out what I have to share with you on this video. Uh, before I get into all that, got to do my usual stuff. Like, comment, subscribe, share, all that fun stuff. Please do that. Follow me, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but anyway, I'm just going to get it right into it. I got four things to share with you that I wish I would have knew when I started my career. Uh, and a fifth one, it's kind of a bonus one if you stick around at the end. Um, it may be obvious, may not be, but it's literally hands down what I can say is the best decision I ever made in my real estate career um, to make it to not be a statistic because I don't know if you know this or not, but 85% of people fail within real estate within the first two years, meaning they drop out. And of the remaining 15% that don't drop out, doesn't necessarily mean they're doing well, just means they stuck around, they hung around, and they are kind of there making it. So really only about one to 5% of people make money, good money in real estate, but everybody's chasing that dream, right? So hopefully this can help you be part of that one to 5%. Um, and let me get into the fourth thing I'm going to share with the fifth bonus one. The first one, you may have heard this before. It kind of floats around entrepreneur circles. It's a little bit cliche, but I'll kind of share you my personal experience and why it really is making more sense to me now than it did when I first heard it. And that quote is that people overestimate what they can get done in one year and they wait underestimate what they can get done in 10 years. Now, I say this because when I started my entrepreneurship career um, nine years ago, as a self-employed, just handyman, um, which is how I found my way to real estate, is kind of just working all the way through the construction side of things. I had no idea to even be in real estate. I had no idea to be making this kind of money, doing the kind of things I'm doing, spending the kind of money I'm spending and, and not really being worried about it. And the amount of growth that's gone on over that last nine years has been pretty amazing. Um, and I, I don't think I saw myself where I'm at now than when I started. Um, so I, I'd encourage you to really look at this from a 10-year um, a lifestyle choice, really, which I guess I had on there as number three, but I'm going to throw that in there with number one, is that you know, really look at this as a long-term lifestyle choice. Um, and I don't say career choice either, because some people have this idea, this you know, attitude in their head of like, oh, I can just go to work Monday through Friday, nine to five, and I can leave work at work and my personal stuff at home and my home stuff at home. But in our job, in our career, it does not, it doesn't go like that. You know, any of your personal stuff you got going on at home is going to come into your, how well you perform as a realtor and anything you got going on as a realtor that's stressing you out, giving you anxiety, you're going to bring home too. So when I say this is a lifestyle choice, everything you do in your life affects how well you perform in real estate. And you really got to take a look honestly at what this industry is really like. If you think it's going to be a bunch of easy money because you're lazy and you're greedy, this is not the industry for you. It's anything but that. And that's why only one to 5% of people make it is because you got to come to this with the right expectations, with the right attitude about what we're here to do. We're here to help people to serve them in a need that is, is fulfilling. And if you come to the industry with a lazy, greedy mindset of what you get out of it, that's why you're going to get it, get slapped upside the head harder than you might realize. So I guess that's a piece of my advice of what I wish I knew when I started compared to what I know now is that this really isn't easy money. It's worthwhile. It's fulfilling. It's some of the best work you can do in your life, the most meaningful work you can have in somebody's life, but it is hard. It is difficult and it'll take a while. So take that perspective. Of don't overestimate what you can get done in one year and really look at how much you, you're going to underestimate yourself when you look back on the 10 year cycle of this. So, and to give you kind of, I guess, some background, on my story, I have to pull it up. So I, I catalog this at one point when I started my real estate career. I think my first year in real estate, I only did like six deals. I was flipping houses still at the time. And yeah, I closed like six deals all from my SOI. I made about 12 grand as a realtor, I made about 80 grand from the flips I was doing. So like I was doing okay with that, um, you know, pretty good, but I was kind of distracted. I was all over the place. And then year two, I did 32 deals. Um, that's when I joined the team and I did about 24 of those from the internet, about eight were from SOI. This is where I really started to learn to market, generate leads and that kind of thing, um, which is actually my third tip. So first tip is you're going to overestimate what you can get done in one year and underestimate what you can get done in 10 years. Second tip, this is a long term lifestyle choice you're committing to. This may be the very hardest thing you ever do in your life. Make sure that you're really to completely change everything about the way you live your life, not just the job you have or the career you have. This is a lifestyle choice. Uh, number three, which I got into, which is what I really started to learn here in year two, 
when I was in my career is really invest in your marketing and your sales skills. Because at the end of the day, that's what people really hire you for in the realm of real estate is to market and sell property for them, whether they're buying or they're listing a home. They don't really hire you because you're a realtor. You know, that just might be the industry we're in, but that's not really the value you bring to the table. The value you bring to the table is how well are you able to market for them? How well are you able to find them a house, help them negotiate the price of that house, negotiate the repairs on that house, and how good is your marketing and sales process that that's really what they ultimately decide to work with you or not to work with you. All of us that are looking at this either are looking to get a realtor license or have a realtor license. That is not a competitive advantage. Like the realtor side of what we do is not the completely valuable piece that we do. The valuable piece is your marketing and sales skills. And if you have marketing and sales, sales skills from five years ago, they're outdated. And that's one of the biggest things I see when it comes to realtors not wanting to invest in themselves. They'll spend two grand, four grand to go get a license, but they won't spend the equivalent in their marketing and sales skills and then wonder why they can't make it. You know, and you look at the income you can make from this industry for what people are willing to invest in it, that's what's off. Again, don't get in this industry if you're getting into it from a lazy and greedy mindset because you're going to find that's not how it really works. Uh, let's see. And so number four that I have in here, and number four and kind of five a little bit go together. The number five is the, the bonus one that's the hands down best decision I ever made in my real estate career. Um, but number four that I'll get into is learn to follow well. Follow someone else well to start. Don't come into this thinking you're going to reinvent the wheel, change the industry, do all these things. Like honestly, you just need to do what someone else is doing and follow their lead and have them coach you, have them teach you, be an assistance to them. Follow us, someone, follow someone else well to start is my tip for number four. Don't come into this, like have belief in yourself, have confidence, but realize like there's a lot of other realtors like myself who need good followers and you eventually will be a good leader, but all good leaders are actually good followers. Everybody's following somebody. Like I have coaches that I follow. I have other team leads that I follow that I'm learning from that I really had to learn this lesson that I didn't have at first. I was cocky, I was arrogant, I was full of myself. I thought I knew everything, I thought I could do everything. And I had a lot of belief in myself, but too much, like to a detriment. And I really wasn't that good of a follower. And so learning to follow someone else well, is a very crucial part of your career because if you can't follow, you can't lead is quite honestly the truth. So following someone else well to start is one of the best ways to start your career. Uh, learn a lot, get going, get some wins under your belt, get some successes and just keep building from there. Uh, which takes me to number five, which is hands down the most important uh, piece of my career that I can attribute like my success back to. And that is when I finally made the decision to join a team and just swallow my pride, swallow and eat, swallow my ego. And that's when I really saw how real estate works is from joining that team. As far as like the ins and outs of it, what it, what it's required, what it takes, how it really works. And that's, I can hands down say that decision to, deciding to do that is what catapulted my career into really taking off with being good at real estate and seeing how a team runs, but then also seeing how I can improve on how a team runs. Um, which is where I went and started my team, you know, on top of, you know, what I learned from that team. And I was at that team for like about a year and a half. I was the top producer there. Um, I sold the most amount of volume there, not necessarily the most amount of units. There's another guy who sold more units. Um, and actually he and I went and go start, started a team, um, which I'll have a whole nother team building talk another time, which that's a whole nother subject to talk about right now is building teams. Um, but Hands down, I would have say if I would have knew what I know now, then I would have went and joined a team sooner and probably started out my career just joining a team because it's one of the best, most fair ways for me to gain a lot of value, but also for me to give a lot of value. You know, and it's a very good exchange of how to get going in your real estate career to start with. And hands down, I will say that is the best decision I've made was to go join a team. And I think teams are great, you know, for developing their people. I can't say that all team leaders are that way you know I think some of them are still figuring out that just like you have to invest in yourself you got to invest in your team and if you don't have enough personal single agent pipeline going or active cash flow or just wads of cash sitting around um, you know you're not quite ready to start a team yet because um, in all reality who you need to hire on your team first is not buyers agents you need to hire a TC transaction coordinator to take care of your paperwork 
um, then an admin to take care of some of your back end stuff, then an ISA to feed you more deals, then a showing partner to help you just show your buyers. You don't need to just give away your buyers to another agent. And then from there, once you've built those four support people for you and your team, then you can start bringing on other agents, other people that are going to also run businesses within your business. So your team doesn't necessarily mean to need to be you and a bunch of agents like most people think it is. Really, it needs to be you and four support people to help you do what you do and to take things off your plate. That's one of the best pieces of advice I can give you for uh, running a team if you're ever going to think about starting a team or if you want to think you can get into real estate and start a team right away. Like It doesn't really quite work like that. Um, but hands down, number five, most important um, pinnacle piece of my real estate career is joining a team. So everything I've done from this point has, has spun off of that. Um, it's really catapulted my realtor career on everything. So hopefully you learned a little bit more from that. Um, if you're looking at starting into real estate or if you're in real estate right now and you want more personal coaching and mentoring, reach out to me. We'll see what we can uh, work out, whether that's joining me at eXp, just being a part of my network. Uh, joining my team locally here in Wichita, Kansas. Um, just shoot me a message either on social media is usually preferred. I'm on Facebook. Go follow me on there. Um, and also just like, comment, subscribe, and um, keep, wa keep watching for more of these videos. I'm going to be putting out a lot more uh, agent training videos uh, as long along with my buyer and seller videos for Wichita, Kansas. But appreciate you watching as always, and we'll talk to you later.